All right, so let's talk about strong acids and strong bases. So there are really five fundamental types of problems when you're doing calculations for acid-base stuff. So, and each of those five can then be used to solve titration problems. But there's only five fundamental types, and when you realize that, once you realize what those five types are, it makes it much easier to approach a problem. Well, the first type is finding the pH of a strong acid. So let's say I have 0.1 molar HCl. I want to know what's the pH. Well, to get the pH, I need one of these. Which one am I probably going to figure out first? H plus, because being a strong acid, this thing dissociates completely. So what is the H plus concentration in this solution? Yeah, 0.1. And so what's the pH? Negative log of 0.1. Notice 0.1 is 10 to the negative 1. And the negative log of that would be positive 1. Notice I'm picking nice round numbers so I can do them in my head, but obviously use your calculator. Cool. Now one of the other types of problems that we're going to save for later, we'll do these a little bit later, are weak acids. And they're not such an easy problem. If I had, say, 0.1 molar HF, If I asked you what the H plus is equal, you should right now answer, I don't know, Chad. But if I said, what is it not equal to? That you can tell me. What is it not equal to? It's not 0.1. Why is it not 0.1? It doesn't dissociate completely. It's going to be less than 0.1. And the pH also does not equal 1. The pH is going to be higher than 1, less acidic than 1. So for the weak acid, I don't know. What the answer is at this point, what do you need to figure it out? You're going to need an equilibrium constant, we call Ka, to be able to figure out that problem. We'll deal with those later. I just wanted to put it right up to our strong acid versus weak acid problems. OK. What if I told you I had 0.1 molar H2SO4, and I want, again, the pH? Well. What's the H plus concentration? 0 0.1. But in this case, I'm going to write approximately 0.1, because truth be told, is it exactly 0.1? No, it's just going to be a little bit higher, because the second H is weakly acidic and dissociates a teeny tiny amount. But it'll be close to 0.1, just a little tiny bit higher. And so the pH will be approximately what? 1. But it's not going to be exactly one. It's going to be a little bit lower, because lower means more acidic. So notice, because pH is defined as the negative log, as the H plus concentration goes up, you'll find that the pH goes down. Cool. So let's get absurd here. If I just filled my swimming pool with purified water, what should the pH of my swimming pool be? Seven. What do we often pour in our swimming pool, though, to uh, you know, keep the algae at bay? Chlorine and? So muriatic acid. What is muriatic acid? It's hydrochloric acid, odd, odd, oddly enough. Same stuff you pour in your pool is the same stuff you find in the chem lab is the same stuff that's in your tummy, hydrochloric acid. So for whatever reason, when we pour it into our pool, they call it muriatic acid, but same stuff. So let's say I put in one drop of HCl in my swimming pool. One drop. Do you think the pH is going to change much? No. Let's say I put in that one drop till I got a final concentration of 1 times 10 to the minus 10 molar HCl. And again, my question is, what's the pH? Anybody uh, calculate this one for me? Anybody who has a calculator? Because I definitely don't. You said 10? You got that right? So you're telling me I put one drop of HCl in there, and the pH went up to 10 and became a basic solution? Really? Cool. 
if you, you did the calculation correct, just so you know, and it gave you 10. And the problem's not with your calculation, the problem's with the method here. So notice, when we put HCl in water, water already had some H+. How many, how much, what concentration of H+, did pure water already have? 10 to the negative 7 molar. That's 0 0.000001 molar. Well, if I added 0.1 molar HCl, how significant is that 0.000001 molar that was already there? It's not, and we ignore it. But now, that 0.000001 molar solution is not insignificant, because I just added 0.000000001 molar. Now, what I've added is insignificant compared to what our water already had. And so in this case, the H plus concentration is still, for all intents and purposes, still approximately 10 to the negative 7 molar. It's just a teeny tiny bit higher. 10 to the negative 7 plus 10 to the negative 10 is just a smidgen higher than 10 to the negative 7. That's three decimal places further out that we're adding something. And so it didn't really change it much, which means the pH is still going to approximately be 7. It'll be just a teeny bit lower, like 6.99 or something, but nothing you'd have to do the calculation for. Here's the deal. When you have a super dilute solution of a strong acid or base, common tricky question on this test, be careful. If it's lower than 10 to the minus 7, water already has more than that, and you're just going to go with what water had. That's going to be insignificant in comparison. Be this is so tricky because 99% of the time, the question we give you is not where the amount that we add is insignificant, but that what we've added is way more significant than what water already had, so we can usually ignore how much water already had. Question. Does it have to say that it has pure water? Like in the question, will it No, no, it's always aqueous. All the acid-based stuff we're going to look at for the context of calculation stuff are going to be aqueous reactions. It's in water. Well, you're just going to look at this. Notice when I say molar, that's moles per liter. Moles of solute, HCl, per liter of solution, which means this already implies, by writing the term molarity here, that water's there as the solvent. So, and the key is, that's just less concentrated than 10 to the minus 7 molar. That's the key. And the pH is, for all intents and purposes, still going to be really close to 7. Question. So, so, technically, yes, but that's the only thing they're going to give you. Because if I give you anything closer to 10 to the minus 7 than this, you actually would have to do a calculation involving the KW expression, and it gets ugly. So, but not something they're going to ask you. So, usually, they're going to give it to you this concentrated or even lower than that even. 1 times 10 to the minus 11 or 10 to the minus 12 or whatever. So, now strong bases. They dissociate completely as well. And if I want the pH... Again, if I have any one of the four things that we know how to calculate, I can get the other three. Which one do I know right now? The OH. What is the hydroxide ion concentration here in a 0.1 molar solution of sodium hydroxide? 0.1. What can I get from this? I can get the POH. That's the route I like to take. Technically, we could get the H plus from this and then get the pH. But I like going to the POH and then going to pH. So what is the pOH? 1. So then what's the pH? 13, because they got out up to 14. So one little extra step in the calculation for the strong base. So again, if the hydroxide's 0.1, then the pOH is the negative log of 0.1, and that happens to be 1. And then subtract from 14, we get a pH of 13. OK. Now what if I had 0 0.1 molar Barium hydroxide. What do you got to remember about barium hydroxide? Yeah, twice as many OHs. Both OHs dissociate completely. And so in this case, the OH minus concentration is not 0.1. It's going to be 0.2, twice as much. And if I want the pOH from there, what is the negative log of 0.2? And so then what's the pH?
Somewhere right on. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Notice, if I wanted to ask you a tricky question on the test, I'd ask you about barium hydroxide, except I wouldn't write it like this. I'd write out in words. I'd write barium hydroxide. Because you might forget that barium hydroxide actually is two OHs if all I give you is the name. So be careful. I know, it is so mean. It happens from time to time. OK. So weak bases, just for comparison's sake. If I have a weak base, like say ammonia, and I have a 0.1 molar solution of ammonia, in fact, we will solve this one directly ourselves later. If I ask you, in this case, it's a base, so I might say, what's the hydroxide ion concentration? And you should say, we don't know. But you can tell me what it's not equal to. And what is it not equal to? 0.1. And if it's not equal to 0.1, it's going to be less because it only partially dissociates, then the pOH is not 1 and the pH is not 13. It's not going to be as basic as that because he's just a weak base and partially dissociates. What piece of information would we need to be able to calculate what that actually is? Cool. You now know the four, yeah, at least four out of the five types of problems. There are strong acid problems. And they dissociate completely, so they're pretty easy to calculate. Whereas weak acid problems, we're going to have to use Ka, and we're going to learn how to do those in a little bit. There are strong base problems. And again, those are pretty easy. They dissociate completely. But there are weak base problems. Those are a little bit tougher, because we've got to use the Kb and like an ice chart and stuff to calculate those as well. Those are four out of the five types of problem. We'll see in a little while down the road. The fifth type of problem will be buffer problems. And we'll factor those in a little bit later as well. But we use Henderson-Hasselbach for those. So, just to see if you're up on your stuff. What should be the pH of 1 times 10 to the minus 10 molar NaOH? It should be approximately? Awesome. It should still be pretty darn close to 7 because we've added such a low concentration. Water already has 10 to the minus 7 molar hydroxide. So the amount we've added is insignificant. The pH should, for all intents and purposes, still be pretty darn close to 7. Will it be exactly 7? No, it could be like what? What's that? Just slightly more than 7, like 7.01, 7.02, somewhere in there. Just, just barely higher than 7. Cool, everybody see that? I can do that with strong acids, ridiculously low concentrations, and for strong bases as well, ridiculously low concentrations. Be careful. 